And welcome back to the Financially Simple Experience. So friends, I want to go over an interesting topic today, and I want to spin it on how we're going to deal with the employee crisis. The employee crisis, that's right, that's right. Perhaps you're experiencing this. I have to tell you, over the last probably three, four, five months, I've heard more employers say, man, the employee has all the power. I don't like this. I, I, I can't control them. I've heard that word control. I can't motivate them. I can't retain them. So I want to introduce a concept. It's a concept that I personally utilize in my own businesses. It's a concept that has a lot of research behind it. And perhaps just perhaps you might consider deploying this within your own company. There's a lot of benefits to mentorship. That's right. Teaching somebody alongside you something that they can utilize in the business or in their own career, in their own future, in their own life. So as we dissect this idea of mentorship, I want to look at a couple of different areas. The first thing I want to look at is the benefits of mentorship, specifically as it relates to your business. Now, there's two words which are hard to say. The mentor is the person giving the advice, and the mentee is the person who's receiving the advice. So let's look at it from both sides of the coin. What's the benefit for the mentor, the person giving the advice? One of the most amazing things that I've learned through this podcast is for me to be able to teach or speak with authority into the microphone or stand on stage and give and speak with authority, I have to know my stuff. When I first began the podcast eons ago, years and years ago, hundreds of episodes ago, I go back and listen to those. It's like, wow, that was horrid. <laughs> that was really, really bad. But now it's like, you know, I know my stuff. I've been studying for years. So being a mentor has allowed me to expand my skills. Yes, I do mentor employees within our company. I'm able to coach them. And as I'm coaching them, I'm constantly having to defend, that's not a bad thing, defend my thinking or defend the process or the product or the position of the company. It allows me to expand my skills so that I can be better in other areas. Another thing it does is it allows for continued career development. I am not where I was four years ago, but for learning how to mentor others, to teach others, to teach them something that can change their life, I would not be where I'm at today. You see, as you learn something and you impart that knowledge, you impart that education on somebody else, it does a couple of things. It allows that individual you get the knowledge of to go into the same thing, to go and teach others the same information. So it creates duplicity. The other thing it does is it allows you to release the things that burden you down as an owner or as a manager in your particular uh, department by teaching somebody else. It allows you to release and focus on something that perhaps you had never been able to focus on before. And finally, as the mentor, the person who's doing the teaching, it increases your satisfaction. The Journal of Vocational Behavior states that mentors are more satisfied with their jobs and more committed to their organization than those who never have the privilege of mentoring somebody because it helps us buy in to what we're doing. Now, not only is there a benefit for the mentor, the person who's doing the teaching or the instructing, but there's also a benefit for the mentee, the person who's receiving the information. First of all, it helps you personally prepare. It helps you to think about, hey, I'm going to meet so-and-so on this time, and they're going to go through this. I need to know it. I need to understand it. It also adds, just like for the mentor, it also adds career satisfaction. 90% of workers who have a mentor report being happy in their job. Let me say that again. 90%, 90% of workers who have a mentor report they're happy in their job. Additionally, 93% of mentees believe their mentoring relationship was useful. So not only is 90% happy in their job, but 93% of those who receive teaching and, and, and empowerment believe the mentor relationship was useful in their career path. And then finally, as a mentee, there's a huge benefit around networking, learning other viewpoints, learning different people in the business, being able to have knowledge and share that knowledge with others. There's an old, old passage that I remember from years ago. It says, go and teach others also. In other words, what you've learned, commit it to other people who can go and do other things. In fact, this is there's a whole segment of the marketplace that's built upon this concept. Have you ever heard of multi-level marketing? <laughs> that's the whole idea around multi-level marketing is you're learning something, go do it other and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. Now, there's a lot of negatives to that particular industry, but nonetheless, it is basically a mentor-mentee position. 
But there's also benefits for the business. Unbelievable statistic. Unbelievable statistic. In the U.S., businesses lose, on average, a trillion, with a T, dollars annually to employ turnover. Let me say that again. Employee turnover in the U.S. costs businesses roughly $1 trillion. And replacing an employee could cost up to two times the employee's salary. However, employees who are involved in mentorship programs have a 50%, 50% higher retention rate. So for the business, there is a huge economic incentive, huge economic incentive. How about this study? 94% of workers would stay longer if their employers offered more learning and career development opportunities. I've come to experience this in my own life, that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And the vast majority of people, I firmly believe, believe that. But what they see is lack of opportunity. Lack of challenge, lack of career advancement, lack of physical, personal development. 94% friends of workers say they would stay longer if the employer offered more learning. So then how do we effectively mentor an employee? A client experience consultant at ELO Mentoring once said, a mentoring relationship should be voluntary sincere, and structured. Let me say that again. A mentoring relationship should be voluntary, sincere, and structured. Both parties, both the mentor and the mentee, should want to have this relationship, and it should be clearly established what the outcome needs to be or is desired. A proper mentorship should involve regular communications. Now, I love the one-on-one meeting, and it proactively addresses problems and keeps things on track. But you have to have regular communication between the mentor and the mentee. has to be there. Now, there are many ways to mentor somebody. But here's some general rules that I think we all could take and apply in our businesses today. Number one, remember your employee is their own person. Just like each of your kids, perhaps, have different personalities, every employee is going to have their own personality. They are not, you're not trying to create a clone of yourself or a mini-me as the old Austin Powers thing was. You're not trying to do that. Everybody has their own unique personality. You have to remember that. Second thing is you have to allow them to fail. You know, the greatest lessons are often learned through failure. We can teach our team members, you can fall forward, let's get up and let's try it again. And we have to allow them to do that. We need to encourage them to take risk, to take risk. Now, as business owners, we are risk takers. We don't mind it. And if you're going to be the mentor, then your mentee needs to understand that, look, taking risk can be calculated. Let me show you how to take a calculated risk, but you need to encourage that. I love to ask open-ended questions that allows them to connect to conclusions of their own. I love to ask questions. Uh, In fact, whenever I joined WealthSource, a few of the executive teams said, man, you ask a lot of questions. And the reason for that is I want people to think through the answers so they can formulate very good conclusions on their own. It can often be seen as prideful, as self-motivating or self-promoting to provide all the answers. But if you ask very good questions to your mentee, then you can help them learn how to think to the conclusion that you need or that the business needs. Another methodology you can use is have the mentee explain things to you. So one of the things I love to do is whenever they have a question, I'll ask, I'll rebuttal it with a question. Well, that's interesting. Why do you ask that? How would you answer that question if you were me? What information do you think I would need to answer that question? And I go through a list of open-ended questions. Doing so allows the mentee to think, helps them gain insight on how you're posturing them for questions so they can explain things back to you. No doubt we do this with our kids. Now, we don't want to be derogatory. We want to recognize we're dealing with the positions we're dealing with, that these adults, more than likely, have great intellect, and they're sincerely trying to grow. So by having them explain things to us or by posturing them questions, allow them to think to explain back to us, then many times we can help mentor them. 
or you can actively seek opportunities to teach your mentee. So one of the things that I, I did with our own company, Heritage Investors, was I would find a problem and I would gather the people who knew how to solve the problem and I'd put the problem on a board and then I'd walk them through the methodology and then teach them along the way. Here's why we can't do this. Here's how we handle it as a, in an, an opposite situation. And I would provide opportunities to teach them very tactical moves. Now, there's many other, other important aspects to a successful mentorship program. One of the clear things that we all have to set forth is this. You have to have clear goals for the mentorship. You're not just teaching for the sake of teaching. Why? Why are you mentoring this person? What are their actionable objectives and items they need to follow? And as you're going through the process, there needs to be a successful conclusion to mentorship. There needs to be a, an, a stark introduction and a conclusion. How will, how will you know when to stop mentoring an employee? You know, as you begin mentorship, you want to start at the beginning and outline kind of the course of action that you want to take, almost like a syllabus back in the college days. Outline what you want to accomplish and over what time period you want to accomplish this. So one of the first things you want to look at when you're looking to stop mentorship is, has the time frame concluded? Have you reached all the points on the syllabus, so to speak, that you set out to do? Now, Let's be candid. Not every time that you enter into a mentor-mentee relationship, is it going to go as expected? I've seen this happen in, in my coaching relationships where business owners start in a mentorship and the relationship turns sour. They had their good intentions, but maybe that they weren't a good coach or maybe the team member, the mentee is uncoachable. That's a good time to end. How would you know this time to end this? Well, you might look at unfettered access. If that mentee is constantly coming to the mentor, trying to over and over solve problems and trying to get in their mind on a consistent basis, that's a red flag. That's not how a mentorship is supposed to work. It's not that you're bringing on your own private assistant to help them to answer all their every everyday beckoning questions. That's not it. Another one often happens is people begin assigning blame. Well, the mentee, well, the mentor told me to do this this way. I'm sorry. It's their fault. We have a problem. Or if there's non-committal, in other words, I hear you, but oh well, not really interested in, in applying that. At that point, we have a problem. It's now time to end the relationship. So how do we end it? How do we end the relationship? If it's if you've fully gone through your syllabus, if you've outlined what you wanted to accomplish of the time frame you want to accomplish, then one of the things I love to do is share in the share that success with the team. It allows the team to see what they've learned. It allows the team to help reinforce what they've learned during this mentorship pro program. It allows the mentee to now begin mentoring others. Another thing you want to do as you're ending the mentorship is determine why was this mentor-mentee relationship a success? Was it personality compatibility? Was it the topic that they were covering? Was it a time frame in an economic cycle? Was it a common goal? What was the reason why this particular mentorship became so successful? Or on the adverse, why was it that this particular mentorship did not lead to success? Same thing. Was it bad personality, compatibility? Was it the mentor was not effective at communicating? Was the communication style was different? Was it that there was a divergence of goals? Maybe it was a bad economic cycle at that particular point. Why was it unsuccessful? You also want to look at what obstacles did y'all have to overcome? Did the mentor and the mentee have to overcome? How can we deploy those elsewhere? And here's a tough one. If you ceased, if you as the mentor ceased doing that activity, could the mentee teach somebody else? Whenever you go through these points, you can start determining, is, did the mentorship program reach the desired outcome? As I begin at the top of the podcast, there's several things that we as business owners want to do. We want to ultimately drive profitability. And we saw that mentorship can help us retain our profitability just to prevent turnover. But friends, I'm going to make a suggestion to you, and that's this. Mentorship is not as easy as it's cracked up to be. It's hard. It takes time. 
takes planning, it takes dedication. As the old saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. As soon as you can develop an active mentorship program in your company, the sooner you'll see the results that you desire in retention, in profitability, and in employee satisfaction. I realize this is hard. Man, it is hard. It's hard being a leader. It's hard being a leader. It's hard influencing others in a positive or negative manner. It's hard. But each of us as business owners, each of us as managers, strive to drive our entire team to success, whatever success is. I hope these points today will help you and they'll help you and your team. Until next time, friends, go out and make it a great day.